okay now we are in the smart pls4 software and we are uh, about to run uh, Femix modeling so what we need to do is first we need to run the model because this model is the same model we are using throughout this master class so we uh, i just need to go to calculate and then this is where i need to do all this work this is finite mixture segmentation so i click here and it gives me one window in this window this is the number of segment which i need to determine how many segments i can create from my data now this is where your calculations uh, for your sample size it, it, it's required for example here i have data and my data set shows that i have 353 observations now my data is 353 now based on a simple rule based on a simple calculation rule i can calculate the number of sample size the first method is very simple where i can just find out how many arrows are going through going toward the latent construct one latent construct in this case sustainable tourism is my dependent variable and the maximum number of arrows is going through any latent construct is this uh, sustainable tourism so three arrows are going toward the sustainable tourism so i can simply multiply this three multiply by 10 it will give me my uh, sample size so three multiply by 10 is 30 30 is the minimum sample size required to run my analysis but there is one more criteria you should be uh, you know uh, these 30 but be careful while you are selecting your sample size your sample size should not be less than the item number of items included in your analysis okay so make sure this 30 is is more than this and then we have another criteria where i can use g power g power software i can just click here it is uh, online application also available so you can just use this uh, this G power online or you can download it and install it to calculate the sample size so we are interested in t test we are interested in uh, linear multiple regression and we want to run two tail test uh, we want to calculate the effect size of 0.15 we want to have alpha 0 0.05 beta is 0.95 number of predictors you can see how many number of predictors here so we can see one two three and four because this is also predicting sustainable tourism so in that case i have four predictors so i'm moving in uh, replacing this two with four so now i have um, all this data available so i'll just hit the calculate button and it shows me the total sample size required so it is 89 so uh, I can assume that the 90 is the minimum sample size I need for my uh, calculation. It means that uh, if I create any group, the minimum sample size for that group should be 90 based on this calculation by G power. It means that I have total 353 sample size. So let me open Microsoft Excel. So I have 353, my sample is 353 and minimum sample required is almost 90 or 89 for me, for example, 89. Now we do understand this is the minimum sample size and I have 353 so how many segments i can create so this calculation is very simple so 353 divided by divided by 89 so i can see that it's almost 4 
so I can I can create four segments based on the sample size required so it means that uh, any for any calculation I can move up to four segments for Femix modeling so here I can go to calculate again and now I can click on segments it means that I need to create four segments so for this uh, this is the maximum number of segments but it doesn't tell us that in our data how many segments are there is there any segments available for example only one or there are three or four segments available in my data so that's why I need to run this analysis multiple times so what I'm doing I'm, I'm just starting with one segment I don't need to change any other uh, calculations here I need to focus on path in PLS setup and just hit calculate now the system have already calculated the segment and the number of segments here are one so it's one so I'm just going to the report and then I need this model selection criteria and I will copy this one and bring it to the Excel sheet okay so this one I click here so this is the criteria which I just mentioned in that table and this is the value so criteria and this is segment one okay so because this is the result for one segment so again I'll go back and run this Femix segmentation again but this time I'll be using two segments start calculation and once the calculation is done it will show me the report and again I'll go to selection criteria copy this to Excel and paste the new one here and delete this one I don't need this one so this is my segment 2 now again I need to go back and this time I'll be using segmentation for three segments start calculation so once the calculation is being done open report select model selection criteria and bring it to excel sheet for segment 3 so do you remember how many segments we shall create maximum four so it means that i need to repeat this process once more so again this one four start calculation As you can see the more number of segment is uh, being created the more calculation are being done so it, it takes some time so open the report and then select criteria copy to sheet and then this is where now I have all the data so let me just make it a little bit bigger so we can understand that clearly okay now this is the criteria this is the calculation for one segment calculation for two segment three and four segment now how we shall decide which one is the most suitable number of segments for our uh, data okay so now I'm here uh, we have all these criterions and we also have a uh, number of segments so I have run this Femix PLS for four segments and this is the result we receive now how we can identify what is the optimum number of segments or what exactly the number of segments available in our data that tells us is there any heterogeneity in our data or not so first thing what we need to do is we need to read this report in the row wise okay the first row is AIC and we always try to find out the minimum value so here you can see that 
1486, 1487, 1455, and 1431. So I highlight this one, which is 1431. Okay, and now I need to repeat this process for other as well. So this one is also minimum. And then we have uh, AIC4, so we have 1602, 1521, 1507 and 1501. So this is the lowest number. Then we have BIC, uh, Bayesian Information Criteria, 1617, 1553, 1555, 1566. So I think this is... the minimum yeah this is the minimum and then we have CAIC 1625 1570 1581 and 501 so I highlighted this one And then we have 1599, 1513, 1495, and 1485. So this is the minimum. And then we have MDL5, 1805, 192123. So this is the minimum. And then we also need to work with the norm entropy statistics, which should be above then 0 0.50 so these two values are above then 0 0.50 that's why i highlighted them so this is all this is where we need to take decisions how many segments are available or uh, how many segments are there in our data so now first thing first we need to find out the limit the minimum and the maximum number so the first is aic aic is telling us the four segments so let's see what exactly AIC is. So this is the table which is available in that research article and also I can show you it here. You can see that this is AIC. AIC is telling us weak performance, very strong tendency to overestimate the number of segments can be used to determine the upper limit of reasonable segment solution. So it means that it is telling us what exactly we are looking for in terms of highest number of segments so let's see here it is telling us the four is the highest number of segments we can have so this is the maximum upper limit okay so the, the lower limit we shall look into mdl5 and this is telling us about one okay so one segment so let's see what exactly the table tells us about MDL5. MDL5 is the minimum description length with five factors and it tells us the weak performance, very strong tendency to underestimate the number of segments and can be used to determine the lower limit of reason of solution segment. So it means that this is the minimum number of segments. Okay, so AIC is overestimating so it means that it is telling us upper limit and mdl5 is the lower limit because it has uh, uh, the underestimation of uh, segments so it tells us one segment so we have one minimum and four maximum segments so our solution is between one to four now the next step is to look into this aic3 now AIC3 tells us the fair and good performance tends to overestimate the number of segments work well in combination with CAIC and BIC. So this is important factor. So let's try to look into this one. This is AIC3 and it is telling us the minimum is in segment 4 and then as you seen in the table it should be work with BIC and CAIC so any one of this yes we can see that CAIC also showing us the four segments so it means that this data tells us there are four segments in our analysis 
uh, in our data okay so uh, there is an issue of heterogeneity unobserved heterogeneity and there are four segments in our data which we uh, you know explore from this uh, now let's try to understand or let's try to learn a few more example for example this for just for this video for example for this video purposes let's consider this one was the sorry let's consider aic3 tells us this one the lowest number is here and this i need to so if i checked and it shows that in uh, aic3 is lowest in segment 2 and then we have bic also in segment 2 in that case i will be choosing this segment there are two segments in our data so this is how we decide but there is another important consideration which we must need to understand while we are working with this segmentation so this is entropy so entropy the the recommended value should be above then 0 0.50 so we are not just looking at this segment we are also working for uh, entropy as well so in this case we can see that entropy also above than 0 0.5 in segment 4 so this concludes that in my data there are four segments and it shows an issue with the uh, unobserved heterogeneity so my data contains four different segments and how to treat them that would be another case and i will explain that in in the next video but here for example if we have something like this for example we have this one here and let me just make another example for you so uh, if we consider aic3 is lowest in segment one and CIC also lowest in segment one let's let's take this example now so for example uh, these two criteria they show segment one is the one uh, segment where oh, these two values are uh, aic3 and caic in this case i can understand that my segment is one it means that there is no issue with the unobserved heterogeneity and my data is from homogeneous segment so i can I can conclude that my data have no problem with the heterogeneity and that's where I can work and I can uh, continue um, with one segment only. So if your data is showing multiple segments then we need to treat them based on the segment that I will explain in the next video. Thank you very much.